Hey sketchy friends, in this video I want to show you a little slither of our most recent urban sketching event. I had the honour of organising Urban Sketches Johannesburg's first meetup of 2023. Over the Christmas holidays my friend came to visit and we had a wander around some bits of Johannesburg city centre and we came across this area called the Mining District. So it is true that some areas of the city are definitely no-go zones that is too dangerous, but then it's all the more surprising when you come across this little gem of a place, no pun intended. So mining, this is the mining district in Johannesburg, Johannesburg also known as Igoli, which is the city of gold in Zulu. This mining area, you can sort of see the actual history. It's, it runs for seven blocks of a pedestrianized uh, main street, which starts from Gandhi Square and then ends in this kind of area where we are here. And you can see all the old relics of the gold rush from like the 1890s and that kind of thing, such as the mining headgear, which I'll point out in a minute, stamp presses, carts, and just loads of information boards with all the history and stuff. So it's like a really beautiful area. So we decided to meet outside of the old Anglo-American building here. It's just really like a really cool building. I read somewhere that it's modeled on the League of Nations complex in Geneva. So I don't know. I haven't seen it, so I'm not sure. The This kind of area also includes um, some sculptures by South African artists, fountains, urban gardens, and that kind of thing, as well as this bronze sculpture of a herd of leaping impalas, which I'll point out to you in a minute because I do draw a tiny little bit of it. So here I'm using a Stillman & Burn Alpha sketchbook. It's a square format. Um, I've never used this sketchbook before. I'm sort of, this is brand new to me. I've used the first few pages so far. It is definitely a thinner paper than I'm used to using from Stillman & Burn. Although saying that, I think it's actually probably the same as the Epsilon sketchbook. And if you haven't seen my video recently about that sketchbook, it was called my most experimental sketchbook to date. So actually that probably is the same weight paper. This one just has a medium grain is what they label it as. Uh, so it's not smooth, smooth, and it's not cold pressed, but it's like a medium grain. And I know Liz Steele enjoys using this uh, particular sketchbook quite a lot. She uses a different format, but it's the same paper as sort of her everyday sketchbook. And I think I heard her say once it's because, you know, it's not, the paper's not too thick and too crazy. It makes you less precious. And I'm definitely someone who is like that. If it, the more expensive and thicker paper, the more precious I get, and I just can't loosen up at all. This year, I'm really trying to loosen my style up a lot more, just try and be much freer and not sort of so, uh, yeah, all I can think of is the word tight, just not so tight. I was using a grey watercolour pencil earlier. I quite enjoy putting down big shapes with a grey watercolour pencil because when you come to add watercolour, some of the lines disappear and I don't know, it's just quite quite nice. It's just something I have taken to doing, not really very consciously. I've just started doing it. And then I just sort of slapped a bit of paint down. Uh, my friend Margaret gave me some buff titanium and some Potter's Pink recently. So um, <laughs> just like uh, in the vein of Liz Steele, I just thought, you know, let me splash some of that down. And in that shadow area in the door there, I just put some indigo. And to be honest, I was like, ooh, okay, I'm not sure if this paper's going to like this too much. Um, it did sort of seem like it was a bit of a mess, not going to lie. But, you know, uh, as always, I forge along and I'm like, I'm sure I can rescue this. I'm sure it won't be an utter disaster. <laughs> I was feeling a bit pressured because I was like, you know, organizing the event and sort of meeting people as they turned up and then also trying to film and also trying to not do a rubbish sketch. So I was feeling a little bit uh, anxious about it all. But yeah, actually, once I settled down, I started having fun with it. And I was like, you know, what? whatever happens, happens it's my record of the day. Whether it's an amazing, mind-blowing sketch or not is is somewhat irrelevant, really. So um, I'm also using my new Fude pen. I've just bought this pen from Amazon uh, a couple of weeks ago, and my friend from the UK who was visiting kindly brought, her, brought it out with her, and I'm loving it. I will leave a link to this pen in the description below, but I'm really enjoying it far much more than the green Sailor Fude pen that I have. 
Um, this one just seems to work for me much better. It suits my hand a bit more. I find like the green sailor one is like quite long and I don't know, I just don't get on with it as well as other people do. I've, like other people absolutely love that pen. For me, I just don't really get on with it that well. This one, however, which I took a chance on, I am really enjoying so far. I haven't used it loads and loads, but I've used it enough to know that I'm, I do quite like it. So this tree on the left here, I did want to make the trunk quite yellow, um, which you might think is quite weird, but actually it's a fever tree and the, the trunk of the tree is genuinely quite a bright sort of yellow green color. So that's why that tree looks like that. <laughs> and I wanted to try and be a bit minimalist with this sketch. I wanted to leave a bit of white space. I didn't want to go too crazy with it. I just wanted it to be an impression of the building. But I also am trying to make sure I do get some nice bold bits in, even though I'm leaving it quite minimalist. So I'm using the black brush pen there and just putting some darkish windows between the columns in that kind of door space. Um, this is a really beautiful building and I definitely uh, would love to come back to this area and actually just draw this building and maybe spend a couple of hours drawing it. Like some of the other um, urban sketches that were with us, they just focused on this building and I was like, that would have, that would have been really cool. But I was uh, super keen to just get an impression of the entire area. So I rushed around like a maniac trying to <laughs> do several sketches uh, in the couple of hours that we were there. So I was going for the idea that I would do a sketchbook spread um, for this area. The sketchbook is not the largest. I think it's six inches by six inches or something along those lines. Um, so, and I just don't seem to be able to draw small at all. It's just not something I'm able to do. So uh, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge, but I was like, no, I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure I can squeeze it all in somehow. So here now I am sketching this awesome sculpture that is in the vicinity. It's literally just opposite this building um, by a South African sculptor. Um, his name escapes me, but I'll put it in the description below or I'll put it in the titles on the screen just now. And um, I think his the plaque said that his son actually helped to restore it as well, which was quite interesting. So yeah, anyway, it's a beautiful statue. You'll see it in a second. Um, out of impalas and um, I was like I'm not going to do the whole statue because as you will see it's pretty pretty involved but I just wanted to get like a little kind of taster of it and uh, yeah my impalas do end up looking a bit like cartoon impalas but I don't mind it it's fine it really is quite iconic of the area that we're in and yeah I just had to get a few impalas in there. I think again I just started out with the basic shapes with my pencil and then I'm just sort of refining it with this 0.1 fine liner. And I'm just getting a cross section of the sculpture, just a few of the, the heads of the impalas. So not the most amazing drawing in the world, but again, it doesn't matter, just getting an impression of the area. Um, and here's the sculpture. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, again, I don't want to go too crazy with any anything here. I want to keep it quick. Um, this is how this is a great strategy for how you can capture the essence of an area just by doing a few quick sketches and making a sketchbook spread like this. This is not the best design sketchbook spread in the world. It's not. Uh, it's something I definitely have to work on a bit more. I didn't really think it through so much, but. You know, sometimes it's just fun just to get your sketchbook out, slap a few sketches down and they just end up where they end up. It's not a problem, you know, it's okay. You don't have to overthink everything and how you're going to present it and stuff like that. Sometimes it is fun to do that. On this particular occasion, I was just so, I don't know, I've, I felt a bit manic. I felt a bit rattled because I just wanted to video this whole thing for you. I wanted to meet people. I wanted to sketch everything. So yeah, just... Uh, <laughs> On reflection, I probably gave myself a little bit too much to do in uh, the space of a couple of hours, but that's fine. So I just put a bit of Payne's Grey in the shadow areas of those impalas just to give them a bit more form. And that's it. I'm just going to leave it like that. I know what it is. It's a memory to me of the area and that's good enough for me. So just making a few notes um, on the bottom left there of what the building is and what I'm looking at and also on the sculpture as well. And then that's that area done and I'm on the move and I'm going to walk up a couple of blocks 
to sketch this mining headgear that you can see, which isn't a replica, by the way, guys. It is the real thing. That's really cool. It's just such an actual monument of history, you know? And then, as I said, they've got these information boards all over the place um, with photos, and then on the other side, more information about things. And it's just really cool. It's really cool to see something like this in uh, Johannesburg City. And, you know, you might think, why is she saying that? If you saw some <laughs> some of the other areas of the city, I think you would uh, also be pleasantly surprised as to how beautiful this section actually is and actually how safe it is because, you know, security, especially in the city centre, is something you have to be aware of. But luckily there were some really pleasant security guards dotted around this area and we didn't have to worry too much. But this does explain I didn't actually film any of the other sketches with my camera and my tripod out. It just wasn't very sensible to do that. It was okay in the Anglo-American area. Um, we were pretty closed in there, but out more towards the street here, I just didn't feel comfortable uh, to do that. But so I'll just use my phone and every now and again, just gonna look down and show you my sketches. So yeah, as I said, there's monuments dotted around all over the place in reference to the mining that took place here. And here's a bit more, there's an information board on the mine headgear as well. And yeah, I'm just sort of plonked myself down. There's a few other sketches around as well. And I'm just gonna see if I can do something basic. I'm not gonna go crazy with this one. This is a very complicated structure, as you can see. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, I'm just gonna maybe sketch the top of it because I don't want it to fill up my whole sketchbook page. So you can see here, I've made a start on it in pencil. I'm not loving it, but I'm gonna, you know, carry on and see what happens. And then once I'd done a bit of that and I was kind of like, all right, that's, you know, that's enough of that one. Uh, I wanna go back and sketch some architecture again. So here I am outside the magistrate's court and that is the quite a famous um, sculpture of Nelson Mandela right there. And just over the road where we're walking now or where Duncan's walking with the camera is Chancellor House. This was the first ever black law firm in South Africa, and it's where Nelson Mandela and Oliver Tambo had their first ever legal offices. So yeah, it's just really, really cool piece of history. And in the windows there where the red signs and stuff are, there's like a timeline of the history of them setting up shop and that kind of thing. So here's the magistrate's court. It's a really beautiful building and yeah, it's just the final piece of my sketchbook spread that I really wanted to add in. So I'm going for the same approach as I did with the Anglo-American building where I've put in some basic gray marks for where I want the building to be. And then I'm gonna go over the top with an initial layer of watercolor. It was an extremely hot day today. And so my paint was just drying so quickly. But yeah, and then I sort of just drew on top and then I sort of slowly started adding more and more details as I as I felt, you know, it was again, just a bit of a cross section of the building, just the top section, and just to kind of fill that space in my sketchbook spread, and just to kind of finish off a vibe of that particular area. So you can see the mining headgear on the top right there. I kind of, it's like, okay, like it does the job. It's not, yeah, the best sketch in the world. So I've got this kind of awkward space here in the top left-hand side of my uh, sketchbook spread, but that's okay. I did think maybe I should just put like little splodge of sky around there or something, but in the end, I just decided to leave it, to be honest. Once we'd finished up there, we just took a stroll back to where the rest of the sketches are through the streets of Igoli, uh, Johannesburg, City of Gold. So here's the side of the magistrate's court here. And then just by turning left, we're right back at the Anglo-American building here. And it's just so green and leafy and beautiful. It's just a really lovely part of the city. So if you're ever visiting Johannesburg for whatever reason, and you do want to see a bit of the city, I can highly recommend this particular area. It's very interesting. It's full of extremely significant history about Johannesburg and South Africa in its entirety, really. So as you can see, there's quite a few people out there. Most people are focusing on this Anglo-American building. Um, I don't blame them, it is really beautiful. And I was just so, so happy to see so many people come out for this Urban Sketches meetup. Usually our numbers are kind of small. And so it was just really awesome to see probably around 20 people 
um, 20 sketches plus a few other people um, come out and enjoy this beautiful January Saturday morning. So here are some of the sketches. As you can see, there's some just really beautiful sketches there. Everyone had a great time. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit about our Urban Sketches meeting, first one of 2023. And if you're interested in learning some more sketching techniques, then do join us over on Patreon. I'll leave the link below. I do weekly demonstrations over there centered around different themes each month. So I'm sure you'll find lots of awesome stuff over there. So do go and check it out. Okay, guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.